everyone and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining our session. Uh, my name is Jimmy Lynch. I'm a graduating Master of Landscape Architecture student at Cornell University, and I'll be your MC for today. If you have any questions uh, for today's speaker, Barbara, please use the Zoom question and answer feature uh, at the bottom of your screen, and we'll take questions at the end if there's some time. Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge and thank you our sponsor, MM Cité, for sponsoring this talk today. MM Cité is a designer and manufacturer of street furniture. They are a partner for all those who wish to create something special in the public space. Thank you. Also, if you're a licensed professional and would like to receive one continuing ed education credit for this particular session, uh, please visit www.labash.org slash L-A-C-E-S. And now I'm pleased to introduce our speaker, Barbara Deitch. Uh, she is a fellow of the American Society of Landscape Architects and the Chief Executive Officer of the Landscape Architecture Foundation, also known as LAF. Uh, Barbara has a diverse background in both the private and not-for-profit sectors. She brings 10 years of award-winning marketing experience from IBM before making the career change to become a landscape architect. Her experiences were influential in the development of the Landscape Architecture Foundation's Landscape Performance Series Strategic Research Initiative. Prior to the LAF, Barbara worked on re-greening cities from Hong Kong to Washington, D.C., where she served most recently as an associate director of Bioregional's One Planet Communities Program in Washington, DC to deliver zero carbon, zero waste livable communities. In addition, she served as the senior director of Casey Trees, where she led the 2002 Street Tree Inventory, Citizen Forester Program, and 1425 K Street Green Roof Demonstration Project. She was a principal investigator for the award-winning EPA grant titled The Green Build-Out Model, Quantifying Stormwater Management Benefits of Trees and Green Roofs in Washington, DC, which has helped inform the EPA's proposed new stormwater ruling and the District of Columbia stormwater planning programs. Barbara earned a Bachelor's of Science in Commerce from the University of Virginia, a master's in landscape architecture from the University of Washington and was awarded a Loeb Fellowship at the Harvard Graduate School of Design. For today's talk, Barbara will be presenting on the Green New Deal Super Studio. Welcome, Barbara. Thanks so much, Jimmy, and thank you, MMC Tay, for sponsoring us. They're great. They also sponsor the Landscape Architecture Foundation, so um, we really appreciate their investment in our, the landscape architecture community. I'm going to share my screen now. Uh, here we go. And get started. Does everyone see that okay? Yes. Thank you so much. And thank you, uh, all the students who are here and um, uh, practitioners and, and everyone interested in the Green New Deal Super Studio. Um, as Jimmy said, I'm Barbara Deitch, CEO of the Landscape Architecture Foundation, and on behalf of the LAF Board of Directors, the Board of Meridi, all the students, scholars, um, uh, and the landscape architects we serve in the, in the community, and, and our Green New Deal Super, Stu Super Studio partners, which I'll share with you uh, uh, more about, but um, uh, Columbia Center for Resilient Cities and Landscapes, the McCarg Center, um, uh, ASLA, SELA. Uh, we're, we're just delighted to be able to share with you what we're uh, doing. And um, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I'm honored and delighted to learn from you as well and, and uh, look forward to the exchange in the question and answer time. So um, be thinking of your questions. And I also want to acknowledge that I'm coming to you from Washington, D.C., which is uh, are the lands of the Piscataway peoples and uh, all of us joining today from somewhere across the country in the U.S. Uh, are doing so from the treaty lands of indigenous peoples. Um, so I ask you and join me to join me in acknowledging uh, the Native American tribes, their elders, both past and present, uh, as well as future generations and their and the native lands. Uh, let's see here. All right. Um, 
Today, we're going to learn uh, about the Green New Deal Super Studio. Um, and I don't know, um, well, and whether or not you're participating in the Super Studio, uh, which you still can, you have till June 30th, uh, but there are many ways to, you don't have to be, you, you can learn a lot about the Green New Deal and the Super Studio and what's ahead for landscape architecture and how we're looking at the intersection of policy and design uh, to work upstream and increasing our influence and impact um, through the resources and tools that we are are making available to everyone as a result of the Green New Deal Super Studio. So thanks so much um, for joining. I would like you to leave this session with an understanding that you can leverage your unique talents and training as a landscape architect. Landscape architect um, all right. You are uniquely trained as systems thinkers for natural resources, natural processes, people, cultural and natural systems. And that's different than an engineer. That's different than an architect or a planner or others. And so you have this unique training. And when you uh, graduate and start practicing, you'll have experience to add to that that um, will is really a, a vital component to helping to uh, uh, solve climate issues and all the issues that we're working on with the um, policy ideas in the Green New Deal, decarbonization, justice, and jobs. So I um, want you to feel confident. We at LAF want to give you the tools and resources, but also want you to uh, go forth knowing that you have this unique uh, talent and, and spatial talent uh, to help visualize these policy ideas and um, advance these ideas and make them a reality in the future. I have this image on here. If you haven't seen it, I encourage you to have a look. It's um, from the uh, AOC video, A Message from the Future. I encourage you to watch it. It's very inspirational and also very impressive. Uh, Molly Crabapple's illustrating and graphics. And so one of our skills is being able to show, um, show what, what the future could look like. And that's what the Green New Deal is about, right? You know, showing uh, an alternative future and how to get there. So not just what something looks like, but how it functions and how you can show, uh, people can see themselves in this type of new future. So that's a key outcome that we'd like from the Green New Deal and going through or the stu super studio and going through that process. All right, I wanna take a poll uh, of how many people, uh, I'm gonna take a poll here. How many people, the first question is, on a scale of one to 10, how familiar are you with the Green New Deal? Okay, with 10 being very familiar, you're in the super studio, you got it. One meaning, hey, you're here because you want to learn more about it because you don't know that much about it. So I'm going to open up a poll here and that can help uh, frame my comments a bit because I could talk forever. <laughs> All right, looks like Looks like it's uh, across the board, but uh, you're here to learn. Great. All right. Um, just one more second. I think we got a few more people thinking. All right. Thank you. This is helpful. Um, let's see. I have one more question. Uh, there should be one more question in the poll. Question two, um, let me try it again. Um, oh, did you guys see the, did you see the results or do I need to share the results? Let me share the results. Okay. So yeah, it's pretty much across the board, but more people are here to learn. Great. Okay. Um, I, let's see, there should be a second question. Mm -hmm. Second question is, while I'm thinking how to get this, is um, how many of you are participating in a super studio, either last semester in the fall or uh, this spring right now, or in a private practice studio or a group of friends getting together? Uh, so um, let's see, Daniel, if you're on, I'm not seeing the second question. Uh, and is there something I'm supposed to do to get that second question? Um, 
Let me relaunch the poem. Um, There it is. is it there? Uh, wait, this is the same poll. So what I would like to do is um, uh, if you th if you click end poll, Barbara. End polling. Okay. And then up at the top, there's a down arrow up the very top, and you should be able to. Oh, thank you. Okay, thing. sorry guys. After a year, this is still my first time watching my own poll, so I can check the box on this. All right. So have you, for all of you that are signed on, and there's so many people, thank you. Uh, have you participated uh, last fall or are participating now in a Green New Deal super studio um, uh, in your school and your practice? Uh, there's lots of independent groups um, participating. All right, thank you. This is very helpful uh, for me to um, help uh, provide the information that I think you're looking for. Great. So most of you, 81% have not are not participating in the Green New Super Studio. Okay, that's great. Because what you'll learn from this session is, well, what is the Green New Deal Super Studio? And um, uh, what we're trying to accomplish. And even though you're not participating, you can still, um, there are ways to still participate and learn and um, uh, take that uh, knowledge and uh, apply it to increase your influence and impact. All right. With that, uh, there you go. All right. All right. So, uh, moving on from the poll, thank you. Um, how and I'll talk about the partners and the whole process, which the Super Studio is part of a larger Designing the Green New Deal initiative. But um, a key point here, and this is why I wanted to emphasize your unique training as landscape architects, is that um, the policymakers and advocates and all the different uh, advocacy movement organizations and groups that are working to uh, advocate and implement the ideas in the Green New Deal um, are looking for spatial talent. And um, they could get it from an engineer, they could get it from an architect, they could get it from, uh, which is good, but we also think we want them to get it from uh, a landscape architect in our approach and, uh, to uh, problem solving and looking at uh, scale and the environment and the interrelationships between people and their environment. So, um, and what we um, want to do is, is bring that to bear because a national climate plan like the Green New Deal, um, most people are gonna understand what this looks like through the landscapes, the buildings, the infrastructures, the public works agenda that it inspires. And so there is an essential role for designers. So I'm saying landscape architects, but this is also inclusive of architects and uh, urban designers and planners and, and others as well, because uh, we need to collaborate. And um, I know sitting in on some of the reviews for the architecture studios or the planning studios, it's like you really see the power of architecture and you really see the power of landscape architecture and planning and urban designers and um, engineers and how it's so important that we all work together. So this one of the goals of the super studio is to not only up the game for uh, our profession to be able to participate and in, in influence policy, um, uh, but to also um, create opportunities for greater collaboration, okay? So today uh, in this session, I will give you a little bit of background on LAF and the partners and uh, the, green, the New Deal and the Green New Deal. Uh, then we'll talk about the Super Studio and the Summit as part of this larger Designing the Green New Deal initiative. Uh, you'll learn about resources that are available to you, uh, whether uh, you're in a studio or not, but how to take that forward and have it um, uh, help you with your work moving forward. And uh, what are the next steps? Um, so uh, that's what I hope today to empower you to do. All right, so uh, hopefully you all know the Landscape Architecture Foundation, and I'm going to put in a shameless plug for our after bash session on, I think it's April 22nd, right, Jimmy uh, or Daniel? 
at six o'clock where we, as one of the capacity organizations that are here to support the landscape architecture community. So there's LAF, ASLA, CLA, CLARB, LAAB, and then we also work with the Canadian Society of Landscape Architects and their foundation um, are here to support you throughout your career path. And Kofi mentioned it yesterday in his keynote. I, I hope you got to see it. You know, that diagram looking at the journey map uh, uh, of your career. And um, so uh, all the organizations collectively are working to support you to increase your influence and impact. And LAF, is a little different than the other organizations because we're a private uh, uh, nonprofit uh, charitable organization. Um, so a 501c3 in the uh, IRS terminology, we are founded 50 years ago in 1966 uh, in a response to the um, environmental crisis, right? Uh, rivers were on fire, the air wasn't breathable in the cities, we were at war, um, there was a civil rights movement. Um, so it seems, um, such an urgency from then has is reemerged now in all those areas, and and there's been a lot of work done since then. But we realize how much more work there needs to do when we look at the issues of climate change and equity and uh, mass species extinction. Um, so so um, our role, uh, LAF was founded. Um, with a mission to support the preservation, improvement, and enhancement of the environment. Our theory of change is that designers of the environment or landscape architects, you are uniquely trained and talented to uh, are an essential part of helping to achieve that mission. And uh, so LAF, uh, other nonprofits invest in science or conservation or policy, or, uh, but we're the only ones investing in designers of the environment, you as landscape architects, to help increase your influence or impact, or as we said in our 1966 Declaration of Concern, to multiply the effectiveness of a limited number of landscape architects to help solve the environmental crisis, which we now understand to be uh, environmental and, and social and equity and climate and, and all, those, um, all those issues as identified in our new landscape declaration. All right, our strategies to increase your influence and impact as landscape architects are focused in research, scholarships, leadership, and then we have special initiatives uh, that kind of bridge the gap in, in, in all those areas or, or, yeah, are in all those areas. <laughs> uh, so hopefully you're familiar with the landscape performance series. If you're not, this is a key essential tool, an online searchable database with uh, case studies uh, of exemplary projects with quantified environmental, social, and economic benefits. Uh, there's great opportunities for you as students to be research assistants, to work with uh, your faculty and, and uh, de designers on exemplary projects um, to help develop those metrics and methods and collect and synthesize the data and develop these case studies. We have over 170 case studies. There's peer-reviewed pu published literature everything you need to help make the case for more sustainable landscape solutions. So please use that if you haven't already. Uh, we also offer other, uh, the Deb Mitchell Research Grant uh, uh, to support uh, research and practice uh, as well as uh, academic practice. Um, and we're just uh, ready to announce our second award winner there for $25,000. So um, opportunities ahead uh, for that. Scholarships. Uh, we're the leading provider of scholarships for students. Uh, you got to play to win, so make sure you apply. We're adding more and more scholarships every year. This year, we'll have $25,000 and more awards for um, BIPOC students. And I thank our uh, sponsors, uh, Permalock and Landscape Forms, uh, for helping um, uh, to provide those awards. Uh, our fellowship. Um, $25,000 awards to take a time out and think deeply and reflect upon something that uh, needs to, your ideas for making transformation within uh, practice. Uh, we can learn more about that on April 22nd. And then we have these special initiatives and this is kind of a leadership, it's also research, uh, uh, you know, looking at the future of the profession and um, how do we, um, what do we need to do to, uh, 
you know, we feel like this is our time to be a landscape architect. If there is the age of engineers and the age of architects, this is the age of landscape architects, right? But we need to make it happen and that's what we're working to do. So the world needs what we have to offer, right? Uh, especially now. So starting with the new landscape declaration, which I encourage all of you to read, uh, it was the update for our 50 year anniversary, which identifies climate change as the defining issue of our time and equity and uh, mass species extinction. It also um, has um, an action plan associated with it to help achieve it. Um, and then out of this uh, continuing answering that call to action uh, was uh, where the super studio was born. So that's the context for where we're going with the super studio. All right. All right, so let's, um, there are lots of full on lectures and resources available on the New Deal and the Green New Deal. I'm going to give you some highlights and we have those resources available for you for future study. But, um, but basically the uh, Green New Deal is um, inspired by the New Deal, uh, which uh, took place in uh, 1933 in response to uh, the uh, stock market crash and the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl and several um, uh, concurrent issues happening where it was really uh, an economic recovery plan. So does that sound familiar? One we need now. So, uh, uh, you know, that uh, look to uh, government with economies of scale and a national vision to provide uh, relief and support uh, for citizens. Um, you know, and so while it's often remembered as the genesis of Social Security and, and mobilization ahead of World War II, the New Deal also transformed the built and natural environment of the United States. And that's what we do as landscape architects, right? Produce tens of thousands of projects of grand regional scale infrastructure projects such as the Appalachian Regional Trail, tons of public schools, libraries. You can see the list here, uh, state and local parks. Uh, soil and land remediation, public housing, infrastructure um, as understood by roads and bridges, uh, uh, but uh, as I said, local parks, uh, rural electrification. So when we talk about now a, um, uh, making sure uh, the internet's available to everyone uh, looking at that network, um, it follows on. So the New Deal was not perfect and required political compromise. Um, such as reinforced and you know reinforced uh, Jim Crow throughout the South. So it's not perfect, and we do want to, when we do the Super Studio, we ask everyone to look critically at it. Um, uh, but we do ask Super Studio participants to consider how to engage with the Green New Deal. Um, it's vital vital to understand the context uh, here and the agenda, so we can restructure power in a more egalitarian ways and similarly transform the built natural environment around the goals of decarbonization, jobs, and justice. Uh, like I said, we ask in the super studio that, that all, everyone critically considers the legacy of the New Deal. Um, and while constructive in many ways, it, uh, again, I do wanna acknowledge and consider that the New Deal reproduced and expanded the reach of Jim Crow and represented some of the worst examples of racial injustice in the 20th century. It did also create a whole, um, uh, well, so many um, uh, federal uh, agencies and organizations, the CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corps, the Homesteads Division, the Aeronautics Administration, the Works Progress Administration, the Federal Housing Administration, the Resettlement Administration with the Farm Security, Administration, the Federal Works Agency, the Public Works Administration, the Rural Electrification Administration, Tennessee Valley Authority, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Delta Regional Authority, the Appalachian Regional Commission, and on and on. So um, I think if you look at the map here, I think everyone in the U.S. has been coming to on, online here for the U.S. has been affected by the New Deal. All right, so the Green New Deal, uh, in a nutshell, is modeled after the New Deal. It's, an it's also an economic recovery plan and um, uh, meant to invest in innovation and infrastructure. 
Um, the New Deal was not passed part blanc, so neither is the Green New Deal expected to uh, be passed in and of itself. It's, it's expected to be a catalyst for a range of bills to be signed, signed into laws that focus on the big ideas of climate jobs and justice. Um, so a little bit on the background, and all this is on our website that I'll share with you, but just for the context and understanding, on February 7th, 2019, so two years ago, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez out of New York and Senator Ed Markey in, um, uh, uh, oh gosh, MA, that's my nice. <laughs> introduced HR 109, a non-binding resolution recognizing the duty of the federal government to create a Green New Deal. So it's just a resolution, it's not law. In it, they provide a framework for a 10-year national mobilization. So just like the New Deal, that took about 10 years, if you looked at that timeline, uh, to start uh, to be recovered economically. Um, uh, uh, so looking at, um, yeah, calls, calling on Congress to pass legislation that uh, these are all the goals. Builds resiliency against climate change related disasters. Repairs and upgrades the infrastructure of the United States, including universal access to clean water. It establishes a zero emission energy standard. Standard Develops an energy efficient and distributed smart grid. It upgrades every existing building to and requires that all new construction in the U.S. achieve minimum, maximum energy and water efficiency, among other standards. It reinvigorates federal industrial policy to guide the growth of a clean manufacturing sector. It works collaboratively with farmers and ranchers to lower agriculture-driven GHG emissions, greenhouse gas emissions overhauls the U.S. transportation system through the development of inter and intra-city public transit, invest in conservation lands and other low-tech carbon sequestration solutions that also enhance biodiversity, uh, hopefully y'all know soils, uh, remediates or repurposes hazardous waste and abandoned sites, focuses on several other technology-driven emissions-reducing investments. So um, it departs, it's quite a list. It departs, very ambitious, very aspirational. It departs from prior sustainability and resilience driven uh, policy and design work by designing a program of ideas and political strategy aimed at merging the interests of blue collar workers, climate activists, and contemporary and frontline communities. What the resolution's authors went on to call a jobs, justice, and decarbonization agenda that places communities facing historic and contemporary discrimination and disinvestment at the front of the line for what amounts to an investment-led strategy in the nation's infrastructure, public works, and built environment. Uh, and this is key to the super studio. Um, in the um, press announcement announcing the resolution, uh, Ocasio-Cortez remarked that the public should view the non-binding resolution as a request for proposals. Hey, we know how to respond to RFPs, right? We've defined the scope and where we want to go. Now let's assess where we are, how we get there, and collaborate on real projects. So since then, a new body of development and economic research has emerged headquartered at New Consensus, Data for Progress, the Sunrise Movement, the Roosevelt Institute, and the McCarg Center. But the work accomplished to date on the Green New Deal has been focused on abstract, national scale, economic, and political strategies. Little has dealt directly with the unprecedented scale, scope, and pace of physical landscape transformation that it implies. So the super studio and the summit will build toward a greater shared understanding of these strategies and the work to be done. Wow, so big order, but yes, we can do this. So that's what the super studio is um, responding to that challenge, that call for proposals. Um, uh, I mentioned that, uh, I think, the um, Biden's uh, climate and clean energy plan, and you'll see it in, I hope to see more in the infrastructure plan, but draws from the Green New Deal. And so there's lots of opportunity for us to um, get these ideas positioned and ready to go for when funding and the um, 
uh, context is, is right to start implementing. So we're here creating a visual library and showing what it could be. And this is a direct call, as I mentioned earlier, from the new landscape direction. It's, in, it's just a continuation of the call to action outlined. You should all be familiar with the new landscape declaration. It outlines the vision and values for our discipline and what we need to do to increase our um, capacity and abilities to uh, help solve these defining issues of our time. Okay. All right. Now uh, I want to give you an overview of the larger Designing the Green New Deal initiative and then I'll focus in on the Super Studio uh, component. And so I mentioned how the call to action uh, for uh, um, increasing our capacity to um, help solve the issues with climate change and equity and mass species extinction came from the new landscape declaration in 2016. Um, in 2019, the McCarg Center um, uh, hosted a Designing the Green New Deal conference. And uh, Kate Orff, who's on our board, um, uh, uh, and the first landscape architect to be a MacArthur uh, Genius winner, um, followed by Walter Hood, uh, and hopefully many more in the future, um, uh, really uh, initiated this idea. Like we're, we're trying to figure out, okay, we're gonna have another summit five years later in 2021. And what's the, what action, everyone wants to take action. What action can we take? And so drawing, building from the McCarg Center conversation about the Green New Deal and Kate really talking about designing the Green New Deal. We thought, hey, at the summit, let's talk about designing the Green New Deal and how do we translate these policy ideas of decarbonization, jobs and justice into, um, um, you know, into a vision for the future that will help inform, uh, help support all the advocacy segments who are in the backyard of Capitol Hill uh, advancing these ideas. So giving them the proof of concept or of these ideas or what they'd look like um, support to help them make the case uh, for more, uh, in our case, landscape, but at least designed uh, solutions to uh, decarbonization jobs and justice. So um, uh, the um, Super Studio and Summit, again, a follow up to the 2016 Summit and Call to Action in the Declaration. At the Summit, we will be convening a national conversation on policy and design using the Green New Deal as a construct uh, to increase designers' roles and solutions for decarbonization, jobs, and justice. Um, and the Super Studio as a means to help develop these ideas. And so the Super Studio. Uh, we will take the, um, it's not a competition, we will, but we will review all the projects, uh, we'll curate a selection of them uh, that will form the discourse for the summit, where we will have expert reviewers from different advocacy segments, which includes um, uh, movement organizations like Sunrise, um, advocacy organizations, uh, nonprofits with environmental or social missions, uh, technical experts, uh, and then public agencies and officials, elected officials, to review, respond, review to the body of work from that we've curated from the super studio, and then help us translate these ideas and how to implementation and how do we actually make them happen. And then out of the summit, we'll get it in a format It'll be publicly available um, and we're still determining uh, what the format of that is, but we will have a website with all the case studies and the brief and um, uh, make those uh, tools uh, available for others to uh, advocate on behalf of our ideas. All right. I want to acknowledge the um, partners, because this is key to make this uh, whole initiative happen. Um, so in association with the Weitzman School uh, McCarg Center, uh, the Columbia uh, Center for Resilient Cities and Landscapes, um, ASLA, and CELA. Um, and together, uh, really uh, working, um, uh, especially counting on uh, McCarg Center and ASLA, because advocacy is the key strategy for them to help make sure that, um, uh, that we are having um, 
the impact and, and influence with these ideas. Okay. This is uh, the team that's uh, uh, working on um, that um, came up with the Super Studio and is working on uh, implementing it and developing the program. So we have the core partners from um, LAF, uh, Columbia, uh, uh, Weitzman School of Design, McCard Center, uh, ASLA, CELA, and, and then we have faculty from uh, universities uh, across the um, country. We've got Kofi, you heard from last night, uh, from NC State, Christina Hill at UC Berkeley, Diane Jones-Allen at, at um, uh, UT Arlington, uh, Minghan Lee at Michigan State, Stephanie Raleigh at Kansas State, Roberto Rivera at Florida International University, and then Lisa Switkin um, from Field Operations, who is our um, uh, immediate past president. All right, so uh, in terms of the um, Green New Deal Super Studio, uh, what is the Super Studio? It's, as I said, it's not a competition, but it is a national open call for projects connecting design to jobs, justice, and decarbonization as outlined in the Green New Deal. Um, it's, as I said, to inform a national conversation about looking at the intersection of policy and design at our next summit. It's open to everyone. So there's all ways to participate. You can participate as a student uh, through your university. You can participate if you're in um, private practice or any other kind of practice. Um, uh, 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 have your own studio. We have several Olmstead scholars who got together and formed their own group to submit a studio. Um, so it's it's open to everyone and uh, partnership uh, is encouraged. Uh, it runs uh, from, it ran from, started in August 1st and runs through June 30th. June 30th is the deadline to submit your projects, your ideas. And um, uh you can submit up to three boards per group. And um, again, the idea, what you wanna do is have, have um, these policymakers and advocates be able to understand your ideas of what the Green New Deal could look like and how it would work in your particular areas. Uh, when we started out, which was not even a year ago, um, thinking this because this is actually plan B, which, you know, usually in life, plan B turns out better than plan A sometimes. So <laughs> plan A, we were going to have all these workshops, but with the pandemic and the funding, it, it didn't come together. So we uh, came up with the super studio idea to, um, uh, to build on uh Billy Fleming and Penn were already hosting a Green New Deal studio as well as Christina Hill and some other faculty around the country. Um, and so to build on that, and so we didn't know if we'd have 10 studios or 100. Well, we have 200 studios participating. So this is great. We have uh, 167 studios from 91 universities and we have about 50 plus groups from independent groups from firms and nonprofit organizations or you know people getting together to form their own studio. Um, I think what's really exciting and it's like several thousand students participating. Um, I think what's really exciting is about a third of the studios are, are architect, not landscape architect. There are allied discipline partners, right? Architecture, uh, planning, urban design. And the interdisciplinary ones are very exciting. So um, uh, a lot of participation. It's been really fun in this time of physical distancing to um, um, come together around this larger uh, opportunity to make a difference through uh, showing, developing our skills as a discipline and being able to participate uh, in this way to increase our influence and impact. <clears throat> These on our website, you can see we have a, a separate website just for the Super Studio and it's open to it's anyone. So you can see who's participating. Um, the list goes on below the fold here uh, in terms of uh, firms um, um, as well as individuals um, and uh, other organizations. I want to share with you the resources that are available to uh, free and 
accessible to anybody who wants to learn more about this uh, Green New Deal and the Super Studio and learn from the work done in the Super Studio. So we have this separate site um, uh, and um, uh, there is uh, lots of resources and tools and who's participating and the syllabi and the design brief. And uh, it's a very... Um, uh, crowdsourced collaborative approach. We have a Slack channel, so you can participate on that and learn from um, what's happening. Um, <clears throat> here's an example under resources. I mean, it keeps going on, but all these categories, whether it's uh, uh, you know the color of law or books, articles, webinars, uh, lectures <clears throat> about all these topics, the Green New Deal, the New Deal, and then all the categories about climate, politics, justice, science, housing, land, transportation, uh, and on and on. Here's some uh, resources uh, about housing and some of the work that the McCarg Center has been influential uh, with their uh, partners, uh, uh, Green New Deal for American public housing communities. Um, uh, more on um, uh, different uh, aspects, uh, reports, journals here. And there's also some work from studios that have already happened. Um, so you can learn and see some of the student work uh, at different, different programs. Uh, as part of this support, I mentioned the Slack channel, but we also uh, host webinars to talk about uh, whether you're faculty teaching and wanna uh, and you know, learn how to uh, teach a Green New Deal studio, or in this case, um, uh, Columbia uh, GSAP um, is one of our partners uh, hosted uh, this symposium on narrative change for the Green New Deal. I encourage everyone to watch this. I learned so much. One, the first part of it, you can see uh, studios from, um, we had Keller Easterling from Yale School of Architecture, Billy Fleming at the Weitzman School of Design, and um, Jeanette Kim at California College of the Arts uh, show, talk, share their student work, their studio work. And then we had, there were guests, um, uh, Molly Crabapple, who did the illustrations from the video at the beginning I shared with you. Definitely watch that. Uh, Heather McKee and Rinku Sen, who, um, uh, you know, talk about um, racism and equity issues. I think that's an area where I think we're getting better at designing for climate, you know, understanding climate and those processes and how to design for them. But we really need to work on how do we design for equity and justice. Um, so uh, there are resources on this website and in this in the web, in this webinar talking about that. And then Rinko Sen, uh, wow, talk about how to change a narrative, like really what's involved, you know, strategically is fascinating. So I encourage um, any of you who are interested in change uh, to avail yourself to uh, these resources. All right, I think um, uh, right on time, because I want to get your uh, questions. Um, uh, um, let's check my notes here a second. Um, just a reminder that if you are participating, submitter, submittals are due June 30th, and then share with you what the next steps are. Uh, we have the review team, uh, which will review and curate a uh, selection of the Super Studio projects to form a curated brief for the uh, the summit uh, to be the basis of discourse, as well as for uh, to prepare uh, the summit speakers and uh, reviewers uh, to um, uh, for the summit, which will showcase and um, review uh, the Super Studio work. And that date is almost scheduled, but it'll be the end of September, beginning of October. It'll be virtual, so it will be uh, inclusive and accessible to all. And, um, and uh, we usually have a pay as you will option. So uh, especially for students. Um, and then all the projects from the Super Studio that have been submitted and meet the eligibility requirements will uh, be available on the website as well as stored uh, in JSTOR. Uh, so they'll be publicly available and accessible afterwards as well. And so we're still working on the post-summit plan for uh, the, the strategy there to continue to um, develop opportunities uh, to help support 
those advocating for these ideas and the Green New Deal of decarbonization and jobs and justice. And, um, but the important thing is that the studio and participating and implementing this into your work, thinking about policy as you're designing, like how are you making the case so that others can carry the torch for us with the work that they do so well on advocacy? Um, how do you be a design advocate? You know, these are important uh, skills as well. And so uh, we know that the power of design uh, can, can change the world. And that's, that's what we're about at LAS and with all the partners. And I'm um, so excited that US students are interested in this. Um, okay, so we have time uh, before I close then. Uh, uh, I guess I would like to open it up for any questions. Um, yeah, Barbara, thank you so much for the talk. Um, so I'd just like to remind everybody there's a Q&A option at the bottom of their screens where they could submit questions. We have about 15 more minutes for questions or even just comments if, everyone, if anyone has comments uh, to share with Barbara. Um, as we're waiting for some questions to come in, I actually have one for you, Barbara. Sure, um, oh, that's a good moderator. <laughs> so, Get the ball rolling. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready. Um, so you mentioned that uh, sort of the culmination of this Green New Deal Super Studio is going to be this summit where we get to share and uh, talk about the outcome of the studio. And I'm curious, the Landscape Architecture Foundation is based in DC. Um, I think some students might be familiar with uh, Billy Fleming's recent article, I guess a few years ago now, where he was advocating for landscape architecture to become more political. Um, mm -hmm. And I was curious where you see the summit sort of lending a hand in us becoming uh, more political, more uh, advocating for our profession and actually getting our foot in the door for some of these larger federal or statewide infrastructure meetings. Good question. Um, yeah, the whole goal, we have two audiences, right? We have the advocates who are looking for spatial talent who really, maybe don't even know what a landscape is, architect is or care. They just want to see these ideas and show people how they work and know that they would work functionally. Um, so provide that proof of concept. And then we have the goal of kind of up in the game or understanding of um, our discipline, right? Because uh, to understand the intersection of policy and design and following on from the declaration, everyone wants to do something, um, but, but I think people get stuck on, well, how do I do that? How do I really inform policy or how do I do this? So this studio is, uh, these are actual skills to know how to translate these policy ideas and give them form and show how they, how they work. And then we're also gonna get help from other translators who are on the reviewers who, they might be landscape architects, or they might be landscape architects in uh, public practice, like particularly those landscape architects who work for federal agencies, the Forest Service, the Park Service, the Army Corps, you know, all these land-based, all these agencies that make land-based decisions, um, uh, you know, can help us in terms of, okay, how do we get these ideas implemented at scale, you know, in, in a national vision, in, in funding? You know, we have infrastructure. Um, uh, the, the idea is also to get, the ideas um, out there and kind of teed up for when we do have the funding. Um, in 2008, so probably you all, many of you are in grade school, <laughs> but, but I mean, I, I'll give you a little context here. Uh, so, um, you know, we had the stimulus bill from the recession and uh, they were looking for shovel ready projects. So projects that were ready to go, that we, stimulus money that they wanted to give out. And uh, a friend of mine worked for American Rivers. And uh, by the way, the head of American Rivers at the time was trained as a landscape architect. So I always advocate many ways to practice, private practice, academic practice, public practice, you know, in any of those agencies, federal agencies, state agencies, planning, but also nonprofit organizations. Um, uh, and, so they, she had been calling on the Hill for 10 years to explain what green infrastructure was. And 
all of a sudden she got a call from both committees, uh, not asking what green infrastructure was, was, but how much did they have shovel ready? So she went out to her partners and found $1.4 billion and uh, shovel ready projects. And I'm sure there's other stuff involved, but at the end of the day in the stimulus package was $1.4 billion of funding for green infrastructure projects. It was the only funding used by every state and totally used up. And um, so the point is I'm trying to make is we, uh, uh, our, uh, the current administration has an infrastructure uh, uh, plan or bill, uh, hopefully on the table. Uh, we know we need to do something about infrastructure. We know we need to do something about climate. Um, there's recovering from the pandemic. There's, there's funding hopefully that will be available and we wanna be ready with these ideas out there. So people think of a new way of doing something and not go back and do things the way we used to do it, but use in our case, a, a landscape perspective and approach to developing these solutions, which we think are, which we know are uh, uh, better economically, better socially and better for the environmentally. So that's the goal to get these start to start this process and get get us understanding how to do that and talk and and translate our work in this way. Got it. Got it. Sort of. Um, I'm just going to start uh, answering or asking these questions in the order that they came in. Sure. Um, so first, we have uh, a question from an anonymous attendee who asked, um, "How will the projects that are selected be introduced to Congress?" So sort of similar. To, to my question, do you guys have a partner um, on the Hill or, um, or are you working to achieve that? Well, we're gonna provide the content and um, um, to, you know, that can be used in a variety of ways, the ideas, right? Um, and a visual library of how this, how this will work. And then like ASLA has their government affairs work that would then use, content for their needs, right? And so, um, you know, if we had more funding, we could get a, um, you know, invest in a, a more robust database or, or, you know, figure figure out how to do that, but it will be available and we will, um, that's the goal to provide the, the outputs, the ideas, and then all the different advocacy segments like ASLA with government affairs and McCarg working with movement and advocacy organizations. Um, to, to then build on these ideas and have this visual library and, and this, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the vision of, this, of these ideas uh, as they, and to try to advance them through, through others, right? We're, we're not taking this on by ourselves, right? This, we're here to support those that are doing it because they know how to do it. <laughs> So, you know how to design and they know how to lobby and advocate and that sort of thing. But as a designer, we need to kind of bridge the gap in between and, and knowing what they're looking for in order to help form our ideas and present them in a way uh, and come up with solutions that um, they can easily just move forward. Great, thank you. Um, so another anonymous attendee Got, got a couple upvotes with this question. Um, do you feel that the Super Studio will offer an opportunity for landscape architects to redefine our mission and or identity as a discipline? Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know, redefine or emphasize or just increase awareness about what we do and our role, right? You know, a lot of times landscape's invisible and it's like, no, no, we're not invisible. You know, we design space where architects might design buildings, you know, tangible objects, but uh, we design lives and we um, uh, all living things and um, uh, at all scales. And like now is our time. So we really, this, this is a one way, this super studio is a start to help get out, uh, you know, increase awareness about what we do. Great, thank you. Um, we have a question from uh, Deanna. She asked, or, or they asked, um, how do you take the ideas of the Green New Deal and apply them to an area that is being affected by the construction of a new Metro line? So quite a specific question. Well, this is the, um, 
challenge and skill of designers, right? Right. Uh, so to come up with solutions, alternative futures, and and then through a collaborative process, um, look at um, uh, you know the trade offs and and make a decision and try to optimize what's best for. Uh, conservation areas and uh, as well as public transportation and what would be offset by not having the public transportation and looking at you know the opportunity costs and um, uh, so uh, I don't think it's um, it's so one way or the other it's uh, uh, but that's that's our skill as designers is showing alternatives right and, and then making recommendations about what the trade-offs are. So really understanding the benefits. I'm gonna go back to the landscape performance series, understanding the benefits of your different options so that uh, we can inform decision-making for the optimal outcomes. I, I'll just add a little bit more to that because this is obviously one of my pet things is, uh, you know, before I became a landscape architect, I, I had a business degree and worked in marketing and um, uh, MIS, so management information systems before uh, GIS, I guess. And um, so a systems thinker, but working with information systems, but now, but the marketing bit, you know, we need to be able to sell our ideas i don't mean i mean that in a positive way some people take sell as a bad way but you know really to express and be able to show uh show options and come up with solutions and that's what we do through the design process you know with and that's what a good marketing or sales process would do too uh is, is a solution oriented selling but as a designer you're coming up with solutions and working with your client or community or the decision makers to uh, com uh, yeah, come up with the best solutions. So it's important that we know how to do this. You can't just, if you wanna influence upstream, right? If you just, if you wanna, I and mean, you do need to take some orders just to, you know, keep revenue going, but, but you know, if you can, um, um, uh, if it, in the long run investment in the future is, uh, informing decision-making upstream to create more opportunities and demand. Great, thank you. So we have maybe time for two more questions. Um, one from April, uh, they asked, can you describe one or more of the past submissions to the Green New Deal Super Studio to give us an idea of some of the topics and projects? Sure. I should have had a list here, but um, okay, I've been to several. So we, we go to some of them, the midterm reviews or the, at the end of uh, term reviews, and those are open. A lot of the faculty will open them up to everyone. So if you are interested, then send, uh, you know, contact Megan on our team, who is amazing and man is managing this whole thing, um, and and uh, or look on our social media, and you can um, uh, uh, find out when to come to reviews. But ones that come to mind, so they might like uh, uh, Billy had worked on studios with the. Uh, Mississippi, the Delta region, or the um, uh, Corn Belt, or um, uh, I saw a studio in, in the San Francisco Bay Area, an architecture studio looking at industrial uh, waterfronts. Um, uh, let's see, I'm blanking. There's so many good, really good ideas and just really inspiring. Um, uh, yeah, so different regions and different areas looking at different issues. It might be fire or flood or uh, drought. Um, it could be heat. Heat's really the big climate issue, right? Um, uh, were there were there any projects related to tribal lands or uh, trust lands for sovereign nations? Um, there, we had another question here that was wondering how this might be applied to projects like that? Yeah, I believe so. I haven't seen them myself. Um, um, I don't know if Megan's on, she has the, she has the database of, of all the projects. Um, uh, um, sorry, what was the last part of that question, Jimmy? You want to know? Um, um, if there are any projects uh, that have been applied to tribal lands um, and introducing and in implementing these ideas in trust lands within sovereign nations. Um, so it looks like uh, Rachel is on and she uh, is giving information about 
LAF and um, she said, yes, we do have some participants working with tribes and tribal lands. So maybe on the uh, LAF website, that's something that, that students can look at. Um, we have one minute Thank you, left. Rachel. <laughs> we have one minute. Superstudio.com. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We have one minute left until the session closes. And uh, I think a great way to end it is with uh, Amanda's question, which she asks, what's the best way for a student or professional to help this initiative in 2021 or 2022 if we don't have a specific project to submit right now? Oh, to help the initiative? Well, just engage and learn. Go to the webinars, uh, go to the summit, uh, participate, um, you know, you know, read the resources, really up your game. I mean, there's, like I said, two parts to this. One is to support advocates to advance these ideas of decarbonization, jobs, and justice. But the other is to up, up our game as a discipline, right? To understand these issues, how to um, translate them and to give them form to come up with solutions. So. Um, you, there are so many resources on this website that Megan's put together um, uh, from all of our partners and um, uh, please avail yourself to them. Uh, there's articles, webinars, lectures, and then when the super studio work comes up, like go through it, you know, mm -hmm. review it, um, but really work on increasing your understanding and um, and then applying that into your studio work, into your design work. Great. Barbara, thank you so much for this talk. Um, we'll yeah. close out the Zoom session so the next group can begin, but um, thank you everyone for attending and enjoy the rest of your Labash conference. Thanks so much, everybody. Good job. Goodbye. All right. Bye.